Okay, so <laughs> my name is uh, Claudio Caccia. I'm from the de Department of uh, Aerospace Engineering in Polytechnic of Milan. My group is mainly involved into uh, analyzing um, aerospace structures, um, uh, aeroelasticity, flutter, and things like this. And uh, for the last uh, 20 years, uh, they developed uh, a multi-body dynamic solver, which is called uh, MBDyne. And uh, for this kind of uh, uh, software, I developed uh, the um, precise adapter. So uh, this is uh, the, line, the outline of my presentation. Uh, first of all, I would like to give you a quick introdu introduction to MBDyne, what it does, and then uh, we'll see some uh, of the application that we studied, uh, more or less, uh, during the last year. So MBDyne, of course, stands for uh, Multibody Dynamics Analysis Software. Uh, it has mainly developed uh, at Polytechnic of Milan, and uh, it is, uh, um, let's say, a framework to, do, to study multibody systems uh, with a an, uh, view on a multiphysics environment. It has a, a large amount of elements, from rigid bodies to flexible bodies like uh, beams, uh, shells, uh, uh, component mode synthesis elements. Uh, you can also add uh, um, electronic and hydraulics uh, subnetworks, uh, control systems, and so on. You can also uh, analyze uh, aerodynamics directly into MBDyne by the simple 2D strip, strip theory model. But uh, when you have, uh, um, sorry, uh, this is for the, for the mainly uh, main activities of MBDyne. MBDyne, uh, basically, its formulation is uh, based on the Newton-Euler equation of motions. Uh, it's uh, they build uh, MBDyne builds uh, the complete set of equations, so the equation of motion and uh, uh, the constraint equations. The constraints can be onolomic, anolomic, and uh, uh, and so on. Can be also user defined. Uh, it is actively, actively developed uh, and used in a lot of uh, research uh, topics, uh, for sure aerospace, uh, which is uh, its uh, first uh, uh, way of uh, working, and also wind energy, auto automotive, uh, but also in my biomechanical uh, studies. And it's also opened to uh, external solvers uh, to perform uh, multi-physics uh, simulations. And uh, in particular, in my case, the interest goes to fluid structure interaction uh, analysis. Uh, how and in which way it is open? Uh, in two ways, mainly. It is open to uh, be able, it is able to uh, change uh, the, the time step resolution and uh, also decide to advance and redo uh, computations like we need uh, in FSI. But it also has, uh, uh, which is the most important tool uh, and uh, feature that we use, it has a mapping between uh, the elements of MBDyne, which we call the nodes, and basically they are the uh, degrees of freedom of uh, our model with uh, an external cloud of points uh, so that you can, uh, 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 let's say, um, uh, de decompose the, 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 your solution between uh, uh, your model, multi-body model and uh, a sort of uh, interface uh, model. Uh, here we have an example to understand a little bit better what's going on. Uh, on the left, you have uh, a, a very simple model of MBDyne uh, made of uh, uh, a set of nodes, uh, which are, let's say, uh, as I said before, the degrees of freedom. They are connected together to form uh, a beam, basically. And on the right side, uh, you have uh, what you call the, the, the wet surface or the interface. Of course, these two kind of meshes uh, are not conforming. You need something to make them uh, work together. And uh, MBDyne has uh, a method which is called uh, move it, uh, moving list square mapping, from which you can go from the movement, uh, from the displacements and the rotation of the nodes uh, to the displacement and uh, to the displacement of uh, the external cloud of points. You would define a mapping matrix at the beginning of the simulation, which we call H in this case. And so you can define the interface displacements and velocity with this matrix. On the other side, we can also use this same matrix by enforcing the virtual work principle. We can say that this same matrix can be used to retrieve the information from the interface points 
to send them to the um, MVDIN nodes. Uh, for this reason, we can uh, develop some uh, uh, FSI simulations with MBDyn. Uh, we have, uh, uh, I've developed uh, an adapter, which is basically a, a little piece of software that stands uh, be between uh, MBDyn itself and Precise. At the moment, it is, it is completely independent from MBDyn because uh, we can use uh, uh, the library. Uh, Maybe Dying can be compiled uh, as a library, and precisely it is as a library, and so we can use uh, the APIs from the two softwares uh, to perform uh, FSI simulations. At the moment, uh, we are in these this situations uh, in our group. We are making, so making simulations using MBDIN uh, through Precise, uh, and we are happily using the open form adapter for a lot of our uh, um, simulations. Uh, within uh, MBDI, within uh, our uh, group, we are also developing a uh, um, mid-fidelity uh, aerodynamic solver, which is called DUST, which has also uh, an in-house uh, um, adapter to precise, but it also has the, the, the chance to, to go directly and be connected with MBDI. Our idea for the future is to be able to perform a, very, a, a broader range of uh, uh, simulations uh, in which MBDyne and Dust are part of our uh, framework so that basically you can perform uh, the, right so the right simulation with the right software uh, when you need. So if you need, uh, uh, for example, design space exploration, uh, you need a faster solver to, to perform uh, uh, many simulations, you can go with MBDyne and uh, Dust and then switch to another software. Uh, I put here uh, called Aster, but I could put uh, Calculix and so on for uh, all the possible uh, um, structure analysis. Also, SU2 is something that is very interesting to us and so on. So, uh, in the last year, um, I've been, let's say, challenged to see if uh, uh, our setup made of uh, uh, open form, MBDIN and Precise, uh, can be used for uh, um, maritime application, in particular, uh, flexible element uh, in, uh, in maritime applications. This kind of uh, simulation is quite challenging because, uh, in this case, uh, the added mass effect uh, is very, uh, very high, and uh, the, the convergence of this kind of simulation is quite hard. And so, uh, at the beginning, we tried to find uh, some benchmarks in order to, to compare our results uh, with some others' results. And, uh, at the beginning, we started with a simple case. It, it is called uh, a surface piercing hydrofoil. It basically is something like uh, a rudder or a fin um, immersed in, uh, in water, of course. And uh, there are simulations uh, published uh, for this case uh, in uh, using the ANSYS framework, but also other. And uh, it is quite interesting for us because uh, it gives a lot of different uh, um, operating conditions uh, in terms of uh, the, the geometry is always the same, but you have different, uh, uh, different simulations with different structural properties, uh, homogeneous material, uh, um, orthotropic material, but also different uh, positions like uh, angle of attack, also different velocities, fluid properties, uh, uh, completely immersed and partially immersed. So we decided to start uh, the, this kind of simulations. And uh, um, the results published in this, uh, in this study um, are composed of uh, the maximum tip displacement and the for me, for me the stress, uh, maximum for me the stress for the structure. And we want to compare our result with these ones. So basically, we perform uh, these two types of simulations monophase flow and multiphase flow in the, uh, without, within our, our framework, uh, MBDIN, Precise, and OpenFOAM. For the structure setup, uh, the st structure setup for a multibody software is quite different from the structure setup that you have for a normal 3D um, structural model. So you start from uh, a geometry. And then you have to give to MBDyne at the end something that is composed of a stiffness matrix, 
a 6x6 matrix and some elements regarding the position of the center of gravity of the single chunk of, uh, of beam and uh, the inertia matrix of the single and the mass of course <laughs> and uh, the, inertia the, inertia, the inertia tensor of the, the chunk of, uh, um, of beam. In our uh, department, uh, uh, there are a lot of tools uh, regarding this kind of properties. We have one which is called AMBA, which stands more or less for anisotropic beam analysis, something like this, from which we can pass from the mesh of a single section to this kind of information that we, that we can feed to MBDyne. For the fluid part, basically we are using open foam, so we are performing simulation uh, with monophase using pimple foam or uh, um, multiphase flow using interfoam. The parameters basically are the, the one presented here. And for the coupling, we of course are using tight coupling with a staggered execution, uh, the, the structural solver first and the fluid uh, solver uh, next uh, with the, the IQN uh, coupling strategy. It is also important in general in our simulations to be able to progressively load the structure and this is something, something that, is, that, that has been uh, implemented in my adapter. Uh, the results, uh, we first look at the displacement results. Uh, you, here I just uh, show a couple of uh, the results that we have. We can see that uh, if we measure the uh, tip displacement uh, of our uh, uh, simulation, it is completely comparable to the uh, tip displacement of uh, our benchmark. Also in different condition, different uh, um, structure, different uh, angle of attack uh, and so on, we have uh, all the same, the same results. What is interesting uh, to notice is that uh, even if we are considering a, a beam model, so basically the output of MBDyne is something like this. You have uh, the, um, the axial stress, uh, the shear stress, uh, and the bending moments and the torsion moments. But with our tools, uh, we are also able uh, to go back and uh, find uh, the distribution of the stress tensor through uh, a specific, uh, um, specific section of the beam. And so we can retrieve also the information regarding the Fosmis stress. And in fact, uh, we have uh, a comparison of our results. Here we can see that uh, we more or less capture all the information that we have. In this case, of course, we have uh, a maximum of a in, uh, computed in a specific uh, um, section compared to the point maximum of uh, the, overall, um, the overall structure, which can be a little bit different because of uh, constraints and so on. So, but uh, uh, we have more or less uh, a, an error that is uh, more or less than uh, maybe 5 to 7 percent, more or less, and we think that it is quite good. <laughs> Second, uh, I would like to show you something regarding uh, a kite foil. Uh, a kite foil is uh, some strange uh, thing that uh, you, you, I don't for sure, <laughs> use to, <laughs> to foil over the sea with a kite uh, in your hand. <laughs> it's quite uh, a strange uh, thing to, to see and a quite complex uh, structure. We made some simulation also in this case. Uh, we wanted to see if we can also uh, represent uh, more difficult uh, geometries and represent them uh, by means uh, of beams. In this case, we, we decided to go uh, again with beams uh, and uh, uh, we can uh, simulate this kind of a structure with uh, more or less uh, 50 to 60 nodes of, uh, in MBDyne. The idea is always the same, you, even if you have a, a non-constant section, you always define, divide it into chunks and you build up a piecewise constant beam and you, you go to, to have the same, the same results as before. The simulation is more or less the same, uh, the kind of simulation is more or less the same that we have seen. So we have uh, using Interform, in this case uh, the, the, the model is a little bit uh, more complex, but more or less the structure is, uh, and uh, the, the implementation is more or less the same. 
And in horse also here, we have some results uh, that we have compared with, uh, in this case, with some uh, uh, experimental data and with other simulations that have been done uh, in this, uh, for this kind of, uh, this kind of structure. <laughs> we don't have access uh, to the complete setup of, uh, and the set of, uh, of the, the simulation that the company has done, so most of them uh, have been not accessible to us, so we can, we, at the moment, we are able to make so only um, a partial comparison to, to the results. Uh, last point uh, um, is uh, about uh, uh, rigid bodies and uh, future developments. Um, up to now, we developed uh, uh, an adapter that is able to, to, to be uh, connected with open form or other uh, CFD software, uh, considering um, flexible structures. Sometimes uh, it can be interesting also to simulate uh, rigid bodies immersed in fluid or floating or something like this. And so uh, I needed to um, implement a, a small uh, subclass of the original um, adapter for, uh, for MBDyne uh, to perform uh, computation with uh, uh, rigid bodies. Basically, the idea is to use a single uh, MBDyne node, which represents uh, the entire structure, its mass and its inertia, inertia tensor. And on the other side, you have uh, an interface mesh, which represents the, the web surface. As before, uh, Forces are computed by the external code, must be uh, given to MBDyne, and on the other side, you have to translate the displacement and rotation of the structure to displacement of the rigid body. In this case, the, the, the equation is quite simple. You can go for um, basically computing the resultant and uh, the, the moment resultant of uh, the, the forces on the, on the um, interface, and then you can go back uh, computing, computing rigid body motion of the, of the points uh, starting from the solution of MBDyne. This has been, has been done because uh, uh, we have been asked to uh, see if we can perform simulation regarding offshore, floating offshore wind turbines. And so um, it, this is something on which we are, uh, let's say, slowly working because it's not exactly our main, uh, uh, main activity and main uh, core competence. But uh, we, have in, we are in contact with people interested in this kind of simulation. And so we are trying to understand if we can uh, uh, perform simulations uh, with our setup. Our idea at the moment is to, to split such a simulation in different uh, components uh, because you have uh, different simulation level, the aerial part and uh, the water part. And so the idea, could, one of our idea could be to uh, develop a model in which the aerial part is uh, modeled by our uh, uh, vortex particle solver, DUST which is, uh, has already been successful, successfully applied to rotor dynamics, tilt rotors, and so on, and is able to uh, capture the behavior of all the aerial part. On the other side, in the middle, you have a model which can be uh, composed of a flexible part for the blade and shaft, and these parts can be connected to, to dust, and a rigid part, the foundation, can be connected to, to CFD. The CFD, sorry, uh, can be, also, of course, modeled in open form, like we have seen in the, in the previous slides. And basically, this is a multi-couple simulation uh, which can be uh, performed with our tools and uh, put in uh, precise uh, in the middle of the two uh, connections. The idea of uh, having uh, a rigid body uh, and uh, an ambidine model to, uh, to simulate the foundation of the floating offshore turbine uh, can be motivated by the fact that uh, you can, uh, uh, let's say, play around a lot uh, with the uh, um, MBDyne models. And so you can try to, to simulate, implement, or uh, uh, represent uh, mooring systems uh, in different ways. For example, by using joints, uh, using 
brings uh, or uh, implement your uh, uh, specific uh, law uh, for the force in the moment uh, or even uh, try to, to simulate uh, all the robes uh, with uh, ambidine elements, uh, for example, and uh, try to, uh, for example, define uh, their uh, elasticity, their damping factors and so on. You have a lot of uh, uh, constitutive models uh, within ambidine that you can use, you can also define your own and, and so on. Finally, uh, coming to the conclusion, uh, today I've tried to show you some applications of uh, multibody dynamics to MBDyne, uh, sorry, to, to FSI. This kind of simulation uh, for us is particularly useful when you deal with uh, slender bodies. So, for example, when you can uh, represent uh, something like uh, a rotor or something like this with beams or even shells and uh, you get uh, an overall uh, simpler model, few degrees of freedom are enough to, to represent everything compared to a full uh, structural model. We tried uh, in our studies to compare our results with uh, some uh, well-established setups and we see that uh, we have uh, more or less uh, results that are very close to the, to the other ones uh, in terms of deformation and also in terms of uh, uh, stresses in, into the, the geometry, into the, the structures. So basically we have uh, no loss of information or the information that we can retrieve is good enough for, for example, an initial studies. For sure, for sure there are future developments for example, the idea of experiment with uh, rigid bodies is something that we just started, something we do want to do go on uh, simulating. And uh, the other point is that we need to, to go on and uh, keep our adapter up to date uh, and, for example, implement something for, uh, for example, time step features and so on that can, be, that can make uh, our adapter more flexible to, to, to the solutions, to the, to the simulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Claudio. Yeah. Any questions? Yes? Yeah. Uh, I heard correctly you said MBDine. It also can be used as a library. This API you can call and do it for preset. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for, sorry? Does that mean that you have to run the adapter or do you still execute MBDine? I execute MBDine through the adapter. When I start the adapter, the adapter starts in midline. Okay, but you, the execution step is actually on the adapter. Yeah. Yes, bang. Can you run the adapter in parallel? Or is this always one? Mm, MBDine can be run in parallel. I never, never, I never experimented it. Uh, it can be compiled with M M MPI, but I never had uh, uh, models that need to be uh, used with such uh, a huge number of degrees of freedoms. 50, 70 degrees of freedom is something that I've seen, but more of that, no. I, I know people that simulate uh, uh, skeleton muscles and so on and uh, their uh, multibody I don't, maybe they have much many more uh, degrees of freedom but I don't know if they use uh, this parallel feature so for me the parallelization is always uh, only on the um, fluid side next question The, the benchmark that I showed uh, is, is done in ANSYS. Uh, uh, it's a study that is being published uh, in ANSYS uh, and uh, we try to, to, to recreate the same conditions. In the past, uh, we, well, the beginning of the adapter started with the, the uh, famous uh, benchmark of uh, Turek and Hron and uh, we started from this uh, kind of uh, uh, simulation and tried to go to some uh, more, uh, let's say, engineering application and see if uh, we have uh, same, com same results and as other uh, well-established uh, setups. Uh, 
okay. Yeah. And then there was one from the last one. <laughs> Yeah, why not? <laughs> In general. <laughs> um, I would give priority to uh, Ahmed. Yeah, thank you. Very interesting talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, how, how is the, this, maybe it's so simple question, uh, the fluids, you get the pressure from the fluid on the surfaces. Yes. And then you want it to be forces in your... Body. Yes, you have... Uh, pressures and uh, 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 this is something that is take care in <laughs> in the precise uh, adapter you have uh, uh, you have the information on the cells uh, on the fluid side uh, so pressure and uh, let's say um, I, I missed the term. okay let's say pressure and then uh, within the adapter uh, you you convert this kind of information uh, with uh, nodal forces okay there was a question by Benjamin. Um, so, uh, you, you could, in MBDI, you could produce like a B model. Yes. So we have a few degrees of freedom, but when talking to precise, you would still need like a 3D mesh. Yes, we use a, a 3D mesh only uh, for the wet surface. We can basically use uh, uh, the same mesh as open form, and then we have. Uh, the point is that uh, uh, you can you can decide that we have two mappings in our current uh, implementation. A initial mapping within MBDyne so that uh, you can uh, go from the information at the beam nodes to the uh, information, so to the displacement of the interface mesh, and then you have the, the usual precise mapping. We can try to, to reduce one mapping, but the point is that at the moment, uh, if I say correctly, uh, we have uh, to map uh, uh, cell centers uh, to cell nodes, and uh, and some some mapping is, is always required on the on the fluid side. And you can also have uh, different uh, uh, refinements. Uh, basically, we don't need uh, a, a very uh, big refinement on the on the structural side. But uh, when you come to the to the surface, and you need a, a very high res uh, high resolution on the fluid side. And so we, we keep these two. At the moment, uh, the, um, the mapping is, do, is done uh, one and for all uh, before the simulation. So you get uh, a, um, the DH matrix uh, that I've shown you is, uh, is stored and used uh, during the simulation. Next question by, uh, OK, I prioritize uh, by, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, you can also implement control systems uh, and into MBDyne. You can program them within... Uh, MBDyne is basically uh, an input file. Mm, and so into your input file, you can decide uh, how the different degrees of freedom uh, behave uh, and so define your control system. You can also call external software. Yeah, at the moment uh, there is no uh, a specific, uh, let's say, API, uh, as far as I know, is something. For example, I was interested in the, the talk before mine because uh, I was trying to, uh, I was thinking about uh, um, coupling MBDyne uh, with OpenMoledica, mainly because uh, it's easier to me to write a control system in OpenMoledica than in MBDyne because uh, I have never done it, <laughs> and so. <laughs> But uh, you can do this, and um, for sure my supervisor is able. <laughs> I've never done it. And uh, last question by Benny, and Ahmed, if you could uh, already start. Yeah, so I quickly checked in the source code, like there are some source files that are called FMI something, whatever, so I guess MBDyne also has some kind of FMI. Yeah, I was looking for this kind of information. I know that in some Google Summer of Code in the past year, someone has developed something, but I think that at the moment is not yet not maintained or something like discontinued and so on. I had in mind to talk with my supervisor. This is something interesting for for some other reasons, but honestly. We are um, busy on other things at the moment. So. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something that uh, we, we would like to do, but uh, maybe if, if there is the need, uh, we can think of it. Thank you very much, Claudio. Thank you.